Hi artisans, how are you? Welcome to Imala from myself, Carly Dove. Now, Imala is brilliant because it's ink makes art like a lot. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the How to Craft Network because then you'll be up to date with all of my videos and of course, Tony's videos and Thirsty Brush as well with Claire. So today what we're gonna do is we are very simply going to highlight some beautiful stamps that we're using. Don't forget to comment as well. I love seeing everything. If you've got questions, I can answer them for you. So feel free to do that. The stamp that I'm gonna be highlighting on today is the Single Rose Collection. Now this is an exquisite. It's a trilogy of stamps. You get the one in the glass, you get the free standing rose at the top. And then of course you've got that beautiful ornate cornered Absolutely gorgeous, isn't it, stamp? And we're gonna be utilizing and using these in a slightly different way than you may think. So first things first, I'm gonna take that beautiful corner stamp that's got that lovely foliage on as well. And I'm gonna stamp this very, very simply using acrylic block, just for simpleness, because I'm gonna be moving it around. I'm still my, using my Eureka as my platform, but rather than using the top and then moving it, just pop it onto an acrylic block. It just makes it a lot quicker for yourself. So I'm just gonna tap on some ink onto this beautiful stamp. And I've already placed down a mask. Now the mask can be anything. I tend to choose something, a different color. So this is cream rather than my white cardstock or a textured piece of cardstock. It just helps you separate your layers and make it a lot simpler. So on top of this, I'm gonna create a border onto this white base card. So don't worry if it doesn't connect to every single piece. Not a problem because it's just gonna be a background. So we just bit of fingertip dancing and apply some pressure. Pick it up and pop it round. Having that movability as you move around with a stamp, it just gives you so many different layers of options. Really, really does. So again, back into my blacking. Keep your magnet so it keeps it really secure because you just don't want that middle panel moving otherwise you're going to lose your straight edges so i'm just adding that ink rotating round and you'll be happy to know we're doing a little bit of painting today as well i'm just going to add that layer of that stamp pick it up go back into your ring and you can have whatever you like, obviously, in the centre, but this just gives you a beautiful, gorgeous aperture of colour and design for you to start on. Great for journaling, this idea as well. So if you love doing journal books or scrapbooking, it's a fabulous way to incorporate the stamps into using them. So now I'm just going to bring this last piece round. Just use that little piece that will fit gorgeously in there so once that's done we take that away now when i take my magnets off my mask off i've got a perfect frame ready to go so i'm just going to move that to a side because i'm going to paint that in a little while but right now i'm going to make my main topper so i've gone for a smaller piece of cardstock in a rectangle and this time I am going to use my Eureka. So the first piece, I'm going to take that little glass that comes with that single rose, and I'm very easily just going to stamp that using the black. Pick that up. Add your layer of ink. And remember, there's so much shading that we put on these stamps. So it just makes it a lot easier of how to colour. So lift that up, look how crisp, gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. So my next stamp, I'm gonna take this really detailed rose, I'm gonna move over my magnets, and I'm simply gonna double stamp it over the top, but sort of down the side as well, so it fits perfectly within the glass. And you can separate the two layers with color anyway when we paint in just a second. Pick that stamp up. Little bit of black ink. This is where you can get really clever with your stamping and design the most amazing, incredible designs with them. 
So now I'm double layering that stamp over the top of the other stamp, create a bouquet in a vase. Really, really easy. And see how it fits so seamlessly. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just going to rub my Eureka and just get rid of that little bit of ink that I've got on there. And then we shall start to paint. So my first port of call is I'm coming to this background that we've created. I'm going to be using my Hemi watercolour. These are the moist watercolour paints. Absolutely stunning to use. They're my ultimate favourite. And they're just like little Polly Pockets, aren't they? How adorable are they? You get your absolute fashion wheel of colours and they really go a long way. They dilute beautifully, they mix beautifully. But you can use them straight from palette as well, which is really, really exciting. So I'm going to come in my green and just add that into my centre. A little bit of water, not too much. Make sure you rotate your brush as you exit so you get that end saturation of colour come off. And then very loose painting over the top of the leaves. Nice and easy. And this can, oh, you know, it can just set the scene. It works beautiful on home decor as well. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to pull in that little bit of colour. Rotate round. And just bring that green in. If you want it really rich and vibrant, just go straight from the palette rather than adding water. But it's much easier to get a really good definition of colour. Again, into my palette. Lots of people ask me about my brushes as well. I use the Hemi brush. This is my ultimate favourite. It's a number five. And it's just perfect. It's the round brush that I use. It's just my favourite. It really is. It just feels comfortable. You've got that lovely tapered edge that you can very, very simply get in with detail. I'm just continuing round. I know it's really peculiar that I tend to do colours in layers of... Um, so I'll do all the green at once and then I'll go into the other colours. I don't know why I do that. I think it's just because it saves me having to keep washing my brush, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. So I'll just pop that bit to dry for a second and then I'll start on the rose work in just a second. So right now we're going to work on this top piece as well because obviously I've got green in my palette. Remember, rotate, take off that edge because otherwise that would have been stuck inside the brush. So if you don't rotate it and then pull it across the edge, what happens is all of that colour sits inside of the brush. Then when you go to your paper, you're going to get a bit of splurge, which is not and now I'm just going to do a bit of loose painting over the top of these leaves and it doesn't even matter that we've got the overlay of that little bit of leaf detail there we go bring this around and this is what we're really good at in Marla because what we've done we've done all the hard work creating this exquisite artwork what you do is get to do all the fun stuff, all the painting, the decorating, the detail. So now I've just gone into my darker green. And what I'm doing is I'm rotating it still, but just right next to the previous green that I used. This will give your palette more easier room to be able to blend. Now I'm just adding that deeper green in there. And of course, think about shading. So the underneath will be slightly darker. You have much more vibrancy on the top. You can go over with a, a white gel pen if you want to add highlights. But now I'm going to start on this blue. So I'm going to take my blue and I'm going into my palette up the top here. This is the beauty of it is that you can use this as your palette. So you don't need uh, another palette to go with it. Works an absolute dream. So I'm just going to take the blue straight from, again, rotate the brush, just take off that excess. 
And I'm going to work at the edges first of all. And see, we've got this crisscross sort of pattern. What this does is it just makes it so easy to blend. So these will be your darker areas. And then now I'm going to go into my white, bring it right next to that blue and just incorporate the two together. So it's like an, a sort of bluey white. And then we're just going to very loosely join them edges together. Nice and simple, see? It's a, it's a really simple way of being able to paint and create um, blending together. There we go. So now I'm going to go back into my darkest green, rotate. Try not to lean on your work either. Just rotate your work round or use a piece of paper because this is the bit that always gets covered in ink. And I know it looks like a beautiful baby foot when you use it as a stamp, but it's just not pretty on your work if you don't want it there. So now with this darker green, I'm just going to start adding in the stalks. And a little tad at the top. Lovely. So now I'm going to go into my pink. I've just sort of rinsed my brush clean. And we've got this beautiful pink. So I'm going to start adding a bit of loose colour on first of all. And this will be a base colour. So it's almost like your crumb coat if you was cake decorating, for instance. I'm going to go into uh, more of a cerise pink. And those areas that have the crisscrosses on, they're your shaded areas. So just by using that little bit of a darker tone, follow the lines, and you can very easily create maximum amount of layers. So now I'm going to go on to this one. You can do it the opposite way as well. You can go your darker colour first. So just use them lines. Nice and gentle. So you could do this in lines or you could do it in circles, whatever paint method you prefer. And we're just filling in all that darker areas. This is how it can teach you very simply how to do shade work. Just build it round. Now I'm going to go into that much lighter pink. And we're just going to connect those colours. So all the areas we didn't do before. We are now adding in that colour. Like I said before, if you wanted to go in with some highlights, you could use a white gel pen. That works beautifully. So remember with watercolour painting, it does dry two or three shades lighter. So if you feel that it's not vibrant enough, it's not bright enough, just let it dry off, have a little look, see how it looks, and then you can work from there. So now I'm taking in a slightly deeper colour on this one, and a little piece of water, and we'll just go through the middle. Like so. I'll just pop that to a side for a second to allow that to dry and I'm going to continue on with my border. So if I needed to use that straight away I'd probably heat set it but because I've got a bit of time I'm just going to pop it to the side. So now we're going to do very similar to what we've done before but we are just going over them lines of our deepest colour. And this doesn't, you know, you don't necessarily have to have pink. It works beautiful with red, um, blue, whatever colour 
you prefer your flowers to be. And I think it's wonderful that different colour flowers have different meanings. It's quite exciting. Um, obviously, the rose is for love. It's for friendship. You know, you could have it for remembrance as well. I'm just going over there, all with the same colour, with that cerise pink. And my brush is quite dry, it's not excessively wet at all, so I've got real control of where my colour is going. But even straight from the palette, it's still workable straight away. Now I'm coming into the mid-pink. And we're just going to start blending them colours together. And you can make it as loose as you like. I mean, some people call it messy painting. We call it loose painting in the business. But it's just, you know, what you're doing is you're giving the, um, to making it realistic, not just using the colour, but the shades of colour that you are using. And it really, really helps just give that illusion of colour. Really simple. So we are just rotating round. Okay. Then when we build this together, it's going to be exquisite. Really, really simple but quite majestic in its way of using just a normal uh, individual rose stamp and just building up to create a really pretty background. But it's a framed background as well, which makes a big difference. So there's my frame. I'm going to come over to my card base now, and I'm going to do a little bit of... Um, free uh, sort of line drawing on it as well. But I'm just going to pop this straight onto my pink base. If you are adhering from the back, always pick it up by the adhesive. Try not to pick it up and turn it over. Just pick it up from the adhesive and then work from there. I'm just placing this onto that key light pink. And then also, I do have a smaller piece of a mat to go on top of this one. Beautiful. This will go on to my base card now. And of course, you can adapt this and change this to whatever size card you are using. up to there and I'm going to take that beautiful middle panel as well and pop that on but then you could do that jaunty if you wanted it doesn't have to be straight entirely up to you I'm going to use some foam pads so it just sits away from the back in a uh, bit that we've done nice and easy and then I'm going to get myself a black pen and do a wibbly frame around it as well. I'm going to add that slightly off skew and then I've got a sentiment together we have it all. This sentiment actually comes from the birdcage but I love it, I use it so so much. It's just really really a beautiful phrase and don't we just together we do have it all. So I'm just going to find my outliner pen, I literally had it two seconds ago. Go. I've got a grey. <clears throat> Grab a black. There we go. And I'm going to do a wibbly frame. Now, if you've not done wibbly frames before, I don't know if they're called wibbly frames, but basically you just draw a line, you do it freehand, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It can just follow suit. You're just going to go round, linking these areas together with your pen. 
Next, what you're going to do is you're going to go over that frame, but slightly skew with it a bit, so it's not exactly on it. And this just ties it really nicely together. So now I'm going to come down here. And then I'm going to go back in over that line. Rotate it round. Connect the layers. I'm just going to add two horizontal with a little scribble in between. So there we go, my friends, some layered stamping to create a fabulous frame. But not only that, you've also got that sentiment in there using the single rows. So remember, we've done the double layer stamping to create one image. You can easily go over the top, a little bit of loose painting over the top and a wibbly frame. And it's ready to go. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you feel inspired and I will see you next time. Take care.